Hey everyone and welcome back. Before we begin here today, please make sure that you like and subscribe because it really does help us out over here and it also helps us reach others in need of assistance with these topics. So we'll be covering um, statics using the parallelogram, how to find resultant forces, and we're going to be using Hebler statics problem 2.3 as our work through here. So what we have going on is we have this hook with two forces as shown and we have to determine the magnitude of the resultant force vector FR which is from the combination of F1 and F2. We have to determine the resultant's direction measured counterclockwise from the positive X axis. So there are different ways that you can find the resultant force here uh, by combining these two forces. Uh, one way is the parallelogram law, and that's what we're gonna be using here. There is a simpler way um, where you use uh, rectangular components and resultants. Um, but we're going to be using parallelogram law here for this particular problem. So the first thing we want to do is we're going to create a free body diagram here and be much easier when we draw our parallelogram. So this will be our F2 force, which is 375 pounds right here. <clears throat> it is 45 degrees off of or below the X axis. And then our top force, which is F1, which is 250 pounds and it is 30 degrees off of the X. And that's probably all the information we're given and that we know. So we are going to draw our parallelogram force. Well, how do you do that? Well, we're going to take our forces and we're gonna copy and paste them. So if I just copy my 250 force, I'm gonna make that copy blue. I'm gonna take that force and I'm gonna paste it at the end of my 375 force down here. And then I'm gonna repeat that process for the 375 force. I'm going to copy, and I'm going to paste it at the end of the 250. And you should get, if it is to scale, appropriately to scale, you should get a parallelogram that has formed between your two forces. So what this means here is that I have my 250 right here, this parallel force is also 250 pounds. I have my 375 in red here, and then my copied force, which is also 370 pounds over here. So how does this help me? Well, your parallelogram is going to go from the red corners to the blue corners, and that would be your resultant combined force, which let's just put that in black here. So that would be my direction and my location of my resultant force. And once again, you have to play around with the angles because it may not be exactly to scale, but it gives you the general direction of where that resultant force is located. So now we have an overall location of it. How do we also use this parallelogram to find out its value and its location off of the X measured counterclockwise, which would be this angle right here? Well, utilizing some known angles here, we know that this angle going from the 250 down to the X, that is just going to be 90 minus 30 degrees, which gives me 60 degrees. So this total interior angle for my parallelogram is going to be a total of 105 degrees, which is just 60 plus 45. And since it's a parallelogram, that means that wherever the 250 and the 375 touch, that will also be 105 degrees. Well, Look at the other side here. We have the 350 touching the 250, or the 375 touching the 250 over here. So this angle over here is also 105 degrees. So using that same theory with the parallelogram, doesn't that mean that this angle up here is the same as this angle down here? Yeah. And let's just label that angle C for now. So how do I find angle C? Well, we know it's the same angle over here as it is here, and we know that the other two are 105. Well, isn't it theorized that a four-sided shape has 360 degrees in it? Yeah, a rectangle, a square, a parallelogram, since it has four sides, it has to have a total interior angles of 360 degrees. So what I can do is I can find the angle C just by taking 360, subtracting off the two 105 degree angles, and then dividing by two, because I have two C angles here, and that would give me my interior angle at C being 75 degrees each. So this is 75 degrees. This is equal to 75 degrees. So we're getting more and more information here, and what we can do next is that we can take one of the two triangles that have formed inside the parallelogram, because don't you see there's two triangles? There's a bottom triangle, and then there's a top triangle. 
It does not matter which one you choose. Sometimes during some problems, one is better than the other, but it really doesn't matter overall. Really, when, it's, when I mean that one is better than the other, it might be easier to find angles, the location and the resultant, but in this case, not that much difficult. So what we're gonna do is we're going to copy and paste our triangle here, and I'm just gonna make it a little bit sloppy here, a little bit of a freehand. So we would have our R, we would have 250 pounds as a side here. We would have our 375 copied over here, which is technically in blue. We would have our interior angle up here, which is C of 75 degrees. We do not know this one and we do not know this one. So most of the time when you're using the parallelogram law or rule to find your resultant force, you're going to have to use the law of cosines. And the law of cosines specifically states that you can use it to find one of your sides if you know the other two sides, in this case we do, and the angle that is opposite your resultant force, which is the lowercase c angle of 75 degrees. So we can use the law of sines here to get our overall resultant force. So that would be equal to r is equal to 250 pounds squared plus 375 pounds squared minus off two times 250 pounds times 375 pounds, and then cosine of my angle C, which is 75 degrees. And please do not forget the square root of that. A lot of people forget the square root of that. Easy mistake to make. So then your resultant force, just figuring this out, punching into your calculator, you get 393.2 pounds in that general rightward direction here for a resultant force. So that answers the first question of, well, how much is it? What is the magnitude of that resultant force? We have the generalized direction, but the angle will tell us exactly where that thing is located. So that's what we're gonna be measuring. We're gonna be measuring counterclockwise from the positive X axis. So using my same triangle that I pulled out, that means that I need to find out what this angle here is because that would be located right here. And then that will tell me how far I am off of the x-axis right here, because I would just take that in minus 60, or that 60 minus my angle. So since I have now my r side here, which is 393, that is a terrible nine, but 393.2 pounds, I can use the law of sines. So the law of sines, when I have a side known, its angle opposite, I have a side known and I want to find its angle that's opposite that, I can use the law of sines. So let's use that. So utilizing the law of sines, which I'm just gonna change the name here to theta. So the sine of angle theta over the side that's opposite it, which is the 375 pounds, must be equal to the same ratio of the sine of the 75 degrees with its side opposite, which is my resultant of 393.2 pounds. So we can rearrange, we can rearrange and solve for theta, which is just gonna be theta is equal to the sine inverse of the 375 pounds sine of 75 after we cross multiply and then divide by our 393.2 pounds. And that gives us 67.1 degrees. Please make sure, um, I should have said this with the law of cosines. Another simple mistake that is made is that um, uh, you forget to put your calculators in degree mode. Do not put them in radian mode for this. Make sure they're in degree mode. So our angle came out to be 67.1 degrees. Well, does that make any sense since this angle from the 250 down to the x-axis was 60 degrees. And then it's telling me my dimension from the 250 down to the resultant is 67 degrees. Well, what that means is that we're not exactly to scale. That's what that means. So in reality, if we were to draw to scale, that means my resultant looks something like this. It's below the x-axis. And my 70 or my 375 and my 250 should have ended up like this if everything was drawn to scale. So it just means the reds eventually, or the reds in the beginning were not drawn to scale, the picture was not drawn to scale, which is fine. As long as you understand what your results are meaning, you're okay. Now you may have a professor out there that actually wants you to draw the scale. Well, good luck to you then. So what that means is we're below the x-axis. 
and we're below the x-axis by 7.1 degrees. Well, keep in mind what the problem is asking for. They want the direction measured counterclockwise from the positive x-axis. So what that means is that we have to go all the way around here to get that angle. So my total angle, which I'm just going to call alpha at this point, which is my angle located from um, the x-axis measured counterclockwise, that would be 360 degrees subtracting off my 7.1 degrees, which this comes from 67.1 degrees minus off 60 degrees. And that gives me a total of 352.9 degrees as my angle measured counterclockwise from the positive x-axis. So if you really wanted to show a correct diagram, it would look something like this, where that is your x or your y-axis. Here is your x-axis. And let's label that real quick, x, y. Your resultant force in the end would look something like this, where it's down and to the right ever so slightly. It has a magnitude of 393.2 pounds, and its angle measured from the positive x-axis is an alpha of 352.9 degrees. Or in reality, in real life, someone would be like, okay, it's just 7.1 degrees here. Either way is fine in my book, but the problem is asking for the counterclockwise measurement of 352.9 degrees. So this would be your final answer. And that's how you would work the parallelogram rule or law to solve this problem of 2.3 in Hibbler statics. So I hope, you, I hope this video was helpful. And if you want to see more problems solved this variety, please check out the other videos on our channel. Also, if you haven't done so already, please like this video, leave a positive comment below, and subscribe to the channel because that does help us out tremendously on our end. Thank you for watching, and I hope you have a fantastic day.